Exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinct pleasure this afternoon to introduce Dr. Temple Grandin to you. I think really she needs little introduction, but just a couple of points about Dr. Grandin. She is a professor of livestock care at uh, Colorado State University, and she runs a consulting company. So without further ado, Dr. Grandin. Livestock people, we, industry people, we got in here. I'd just like to know who I'm talking to, okay? And how about the animal uh, welfare groups? And uh, what about uh, you know customers like you know grocery stores, people, and stuff like that? Good, we got some of those too. Uh, I've been working in in designing animal handling facilities, working on improving animal handling uh, for the last 30 years. And when I first started out in my career. I thought I could fix everything just with engineering. If you could just build the perfect system, everything's going to work. Mm -hmm. Well, I discovered that engineering is only half of the equation. The other half of the equation is management. And uh, in fact, the big plants here in Canada use equipment I've designed. Uh, half the cattle in the U.S. are handled in equipment I designed. And I had some clients that really did a good job of running things. And for a long time, the Canadian plants used to be the best. You know, it always used to be that um, Canada was better, you know, than in the U.S. And then in 1999, I was hired by McDonald's and Wendy's Corporation to implement their animal welfare auditing system. And then all of a sudden, the U.S. actually shot ahead of Canada. Wendy's has got a very, very strong program up there. McDonald's now is a very strong program on slaughter plants, and this program is just on slaughter plants. But one of the big problems I had was, I'd say maybe, you know, before the audit started, maybe 25-30% of the plants did a decent job. And then you had about 25% that were just awful. It was just no management at all. What were the biggest problems you used to find? They were lack of maintenance, you know, kinds of problems. Just total lack of management. And when a big customer starts auditing, you know, a supplier, it can bring about tremendous, tremendous change. This is where I learned about just how powerful the pocketbook can be. And we implemented my auditing system. But I think before I tell you about the auditing system, I'm going to show you some of the things I've designed and just talk about some of the improvements that came about, many of them that were extremely simple. Down in the States, there were 75 beef and pork clients on the McDonald's approved supplier list. Only three had to build really, really expensive capital improvement kinds of things. All of the others did a whole lot of simple things, like non-slip flooring, uh, changing lighting, uh, fixing easy things. Another thing we found is that out of those 75 plants, there were three plant managers that had to go down the road because they just didn't get the right attitude. You know, but basically what the plants had to do to do a good job was fix a whole lot of little things that added up to a really big thing. Now I always get asked, are cattle afraid of getting slaughtered? They're much more afraid of the dark. You see how dark the entrance there looks? Well, what we did to fix that was we ripped off some of the tin and replaced it with white translucent panels to let in lots of shadow free light. Um, this particular plant, see that catwalk up there? One time I was up on that catwalk and I kicked a plastic bottle down into the chute, and the cattle would not walk over that plastic bottle. It just about shut the plant down. And I, early in my career, I had to figure out, do they know they're going to get slaughtered? So I'd go over to the local Swift plant, and then I'd go out to a ranch and, or a feedlot and watch the cattle going through the chutes at the feedlot, and I found that they behaved exactly the same way in both places. They knew they were going to get slaughtered, they would be a lot wilder at the plant. And the biggest problem was, you know, too much, you know, rough handling. People problems, the biggest problems. Now you see the reflection on the floor of that chute? This plant um, failed two McDonald's audits because of this reflection. It caused pigs to constantly back up, and then they had to keep shocking them with the electric prod. And when we changed the lighting, all we did was move a light about two feet, and the reflection went away. It was amazing the things that we could do with lighting, and then blocking the vision with shields so they wouldn't see people, wouldn't see moving equipment. Um, I used to go into plants and do what I call the lights and cardboard trick. 
And this was an example of using behavior. I'd get some big pieces of cardboard, I'd block things up just right, and then we'd move some lights, and then I had a light on a cord, and I'd hold it over the chute entrance, and they'd go right in. You know, you see what I want to try to emphasize to people, instead of getting out more prods, you need to change the lighting because these pigs are afraid of this, uh, this reflection. And they just wouldn't go up until we fixed that. Another thing that happened, since the electric prod use had to be, you know, greatly reduced, people got very creative on coming up with alternative, you know, driving aids. You know, here's a very nice little flag on the end of a flexible stick. People put grocery bags on the end of sticks. That worked really well for turning animals. Another important principle in handling animals is calm animals are easier to handle. And another thing is cattle and pigs need to have experience with people walking on foot amongst them and being taken in and out of pens of people on foot because in the brain of the cattle or the pig, a person in a pen and a person in the alley are perceived as two different things. I've seen some horrible problems with cattle. Uh, you won't have a problem with it here in the eastern Canada, but out west I've seen problems where at a meat plant, cattle got to see the very first uh, man on, on foot taking him in and out of a pen. It was just terrible. Pigs need to have people walking through the pens to get them used to people walking through them. Tina Wadowski, my good friend up at the University of Guelph, um, did a study that showed that, yes, they did move more easily. Another principle that's very important is you have the crowd pen that leads up to the single file chute. You fill it half full. I cannot emphasize that enough. Half full. You jam it too full, uh, you're going to have all kinds of problems. There's another kind of a thing that can scare the animals. You got a little yellow ribbon on there. Uh, you can have situations where when the fan is turned on, it's fine, but when a fan's turned off, they can see the blades rotating in the wind and they won't go. If you get air blowing back in their face, that's gonna make them balk. In fact, in Animals in Translation, I got a whole list of all the little things you need to fix that make animals balk. Now here's a, one of the very simple little fixes we did with light. On the entrance of a stun box, the entrance of a restrainer, you light it up with a light that gives indirect lighting. If it shines in their eyes, they're not gonna go in. I can't believe the number of plants where I've taken a light on a cord and held it up there. And we were able to cut the electric prod use down from like 50% of the animals down to maybe 10 or 15% just by adding a light. But you gotta make sure you put it on right. If you put it shining in their eyes, that's not gonna work. This just shows a very nice, you know, curved chute system with solid sides. And why solid sides? Cattle have wide angle vision. Pigs have wide angle vision. And if you have solid sides, they don't see all the things outside the chute that scare them. I remember another place I went to. They could see the shiny, um, shiny uh, truck that brought in salt for the hides. And they'd see that shiny stainless steel truck. And when the sun was shining on that just the wrong way, they just wouldn't move. People got very astute at finding the little distractions. And sometimes you gotta really look because to get to make the animals move easily, you gotta find, you might need a light on your entrance. Then you might need to move a light to get rid of a reflection. And then you might need to add a shield to prevent them from seeing a person. And unless you find all three of those distractions and fix them, you're gonna have problems. And one of the things that was good is the plants that had my, my state-of-the-art systems, yeah, they did work better. But I was very pleased how some of the older plants worked. It was sort of the difference between an A student and a solid B plus or B student, you know, fixing a whole lot of the little things. The main big things that we had to fix was non-slip flooring, high traffic areas like stun boxes, the, um, the crowd pen floor, unloading ramps, non-slip flooring, lots of stuff we did on that. One of the simplest things for cattle is just making a grid out of metal bars. Lots of things with adding lights and moving lights. And then the third thing I, I call blocking vision. Solid sides on chutes, maybe hanging conveyor belt curtains up to prevent the animals from looking through the restrainer and seeing moving conveyors and things. But it's basically shields, lighting, and non-slip flooring. I just, it's just, see, this is an example of using behavior rather than force. I find a lot of times people have a hard time understanding that. They go, well, let's just get some hydraulic thing, you know, to kick them in the butt or something. No, that's not the thing to do. 